Hey guys, uh, here's a video to walk you through the next formula for uh, volume. We're going to focus on the pyramid and actually the cone. Uh, and if I was there today, we would have done an activity that relates the volume of the uh, pyramid to the volume of the prism that actually contains it. Uh, they're going to have the same base and the same height, and you're going to see there's a direct relationship there. <coughs> Excuse me. So the pyramid and, a, again, a prism where they have the same base and the same height, and we're going to just try to figure out how many times that pyramid can actually fit inside that prism. Uh, so we were going to use rice because it was a little easier to, to do it a little less messy, although it can get pretty messy. And, and in his video, he actually uses water um, to fill it in. So see if you can guess. How many times do you think you could fill that pyramid with water and then into the prism? How many times would it take to fill up that prism? Uh, most people seem to think it's two. You know, just by looking at it, you're going to be surprised when you see it's not actually two. So here's the second pyramid. Again, they have the same base and the same height. There's two. It looks like it's going to take another one for sure. There's the third one. Top it off a little bit. And there you go. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it actually takes three pyramids with the same base and the same height to fill the prism with that same base and same height. So what does that mean? That means that the volume of a pyramid, the volume of the pyramid is exactly one third the volume of the prism. Well, we know the volume of the prism is big B times H. That's a Y there. Big B times H, that's the prism right here, okay? So the only difference is for a pyramid all you have to do is divide that by three, right? One third big B times H. It takes three pyramids to make one prism. So if I take the prism and divide it by three, I should get one pyramid. So when you look on your formula sheet and you see this, that's, that's why that happens. Okay, so let's see how that works with this example. Uh, so the volume is going to be one third big B. So here's the good news. When you're looking at these, um, when you're looking at these pyramids, there's only one base, okay? Uh, I know when we were doing prisms, it was a little confusing sometimes where the base would be, but in these examples, <coughs> excuse me, in these examples, uh, you're always going to find that one base because it's the only one like it. So you're not looking for anything parallel or congruent this time. You're really just looking for that one base. Okay, so the base here looks like it's a square with side length 10. So the area of that square is going to be 10 squared, right? 10 times 10 times the height of the pyramid. The height of the pyramid looks like it's exactly 12 right here. It's given times 12. There's a, there's a basic example. So this is going to be one third times 100 times 12. So that's one third times 1200, which is 400 cubic yards. That's it. This is the key right here. Okay. So the volume of a pyramid is exactly one third the volume of the prism that has the same base and the same height. Okay, let's look at another one. All right, so again, it's still one-third big B times H. In this case, big B is not a square. Okay, in this case, big B looks like a rectangle, but it's five by three, so I can still find the area of that. So that would be one-third five times three. There's my big B, and then my height here is four. Okay, do that out. Looks like it's one third times, that's 15, that's 60, which is 20. And that's going to be cubic inches. So it's really, it really is that simple. Um, the hard part is maybe understanding where the one third comes from, but if you followed the video, um, you know, the, with the water, that's really where that comes from. And the uh, just recognizing what big B is, like we've always had to do. Okay, uh, when we do the cone, I could have done the same exact experiment with the cone. It would take three. It would take three of these cones to fill in the cylinder that contains it with the same base and the same height. So the formula is actually the same. The only difference is on your formula sheet, you probably see it like this. For the cone, you probably see it as one third pi r squared h. But remember, pi r squared that's just big B, right? Big B for a, a cone or a cylinder is is a circle, so it's pi r squared. That's the only reason why the pi r squared is there. Same thing when we did the cylinder. So for this one, the volume would be one-third pi 
the radius looks like it's 4, so 4 squared, and the height of the cone looks like it's 6, so that's 1 third pi, that's 16 times 6, that's 1 third pi, what's that, 96 times 96, uh, is that divisible by 3? Yeah, so 32, so 32 pi, which again in your calculators, I'm not sure if I use 3.14 here or not, I could have used the pi button, but it's about 100.48. So 100.48, and that looks like it's cubic centimeters. Okay, it doesn't really matter how you do this part. We, we've talked about that before. So just get yourself all the pieces of the puzzle and then simplify it within reason. And that's the basics for volume of pyramid and cone. It's really just one new formula, but the new formula is directly related to the formulas we've already used. Just got to remember to do the one-third. Okay, be sure and let me know if you have any questions. You get stuck. Obviously, they can get more complicated. You might have to go backwards. That might give you multiple you know, volumes to figure out in one picture, uh, but just give it a shot. It's really the same concept as before. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.